People hate wolves because I think they see them as a threat to their livelihood. It's incredibly frustrating because there really aren't very good data on what the grassroots individual ranchers feel. There's only a few places on the planet that have made accommodations for wolves, and we're one of them. To some extent in this area, wolves represent government taking a misstep, government gone wrong. The removal of wolves from the Federal Endangered Species list was done very poorly. Wolves are not weapons of mass destruction. The wolves were reintroduced in 1995 and 96. It was done in two phases. There were plans for future reintroductions if necessary, but the wolves took to Yellowstone uh, right away. It took decades of, of, of work to bring them back here. Um, and then we're in the 18th year of our research program and having wolves back on the land. And uh, we've been studying them ever since the beginning. To me, wolves mean wildness and wild nature. You know, we are losing so much of our connection as an American society uh, to what our wildlife heritage is, and wolves are at the core of that. So, so this is a cow elk that lived a long time in the Yellowstone ecosystem, and you know, she's lived for the last 18 years, so she's lived and survived with wolves. Wolves aren't causing wide-scale decimation of elk herds around the states. You might have times when wolves uh, cause elk herds to decline and take hunting opportunities away from people, and we have to come to whether or not if that's acceptable to us as a society to have that balance. Hunting is a big part of our economy out here, and it's gradually gotten bad. We're competing with too many predators now. Uh, the wolves, the mountain lions, and the grizzly bears are slowly gaining the upper hand here. We used to do over 100 elk a year. Now we're down to around 40, and a lot of mine are coming from other parts of the state where the wolves aren't. Like I say, the moose and stuff you see come out of Alaska now instead of out of the canyon here. Uh, they're just, there's not that many to go around anymore. And like I say, there's a place for them, but they need to be regulated like every other animal. And I just feel they haven't been, it's gotten way out of control. Our wolf season just started 10 years ago. There's such a long history of hostility towards wolves. I think it was a big problem that wolves were not on the landscape for a few generations, since about the 1930s. That's caused a lot of, lot of problems. The hunting industry grew and it was boom times for the hunters, but that was somewhat illusionary because we didn't have all the predators keeping in check those ungulate populations. So I think there's a lot of hostility because the, the folks who are alive now, their families didn't have to grow up dealing with wolves. So all of a sudden wolves are on the landscape and now they have to think, they have to ranch, think about ranching in a different way or think about hunting in a different way. Hunting and just hunting in general are both extremely uh, important to people in Montana. It's interwoven into the traditions that we observe, um, the you know, pathways of our daily life throughout the year. It's something that we zealously protect. Hunting is very important, a uh, very important way in which to put food on the table for, for many, many families. A good sized elk can feed uh, a family of four or, or more if it's a larger elk throughout the year. That's been the traditional way in Montana for you know, decades. And with the addition of the wolf, it has made some pretty significant decreases in numbers of certain animals. It's making it just a little bit harder and you have, to, you, you have to work longer and harder in order to, you know, again, bring meat to the table. There, there was certainly frustration as part of that reintroduction. It, it, did, it did feel as if we had to go along for the ride for a while, willingly or not. But now, since the hunt, hunts have uh, started up, now we've, we've regained that, that sense of, of empowerment, um, you know, self-sufficiency involvement in the process. And again, that's, that's really important for us um, as, uh, 
as a state that, that has the hunting traditions that we have. business at the wild site is to take people into the park to view mainly wolves. Wolves are our specialty. They're a little harder to find for most Yellowstone visitors, so we often get hired by people that specifically want to see a wolf in the wild. We look at the livelihood debate a little differently because we do feel like there's such a big economy based around the wolf and that there's a lot of us trying to make our livelihood with the wolves too. So it isn't, it isn't just the livestock producer's livelihood or the elk hunting outfitter's livelihood that we're talking about in this Western wolf debate. There's a lot of tourism livelihoods that are at stake here too. One former University of Montana economist did surveying of Yellowstone visitors right in the park. And they're spending, he estimated, somewhere on the order of $35 million every year in the communities around Yellowstone to do this. So it's a significant impact uh, for our economy to have these animals back and people coming to us to see them. We lost uh, over the last month uh, seven Yellowstone Park wolves that spend predominantly the most of their lives in the park. You know, wolves don't recognize political boundaries, and so when they leave park boundaries, maybe only for a day or two of the entire year, they're subject to the management jurisdiction of that land, which is the state agencies. So they were legally taken during the hunt. And particularly, we lost a very famous wolf. Many argue that she's the most famous wolf in the world, uh, and millions of visitors have seen 832. She's also known as the 06 female because she was born in 2006. She was an extraordinary wolf. She was particularly beautiful. The big fans of Yellowstone wolves are following the lives of the actual individuals. They are the attraction. These become the stars of our show. So without them, you're like, oh wow. And, and to have them hunted is even harder for, for our guests to, to understand. I get thousands of emails per year um, castigating me as a terrible human being because we allow hunting of wolves in Montana. How do we run a hunt in Montana and Idaho and Wyoming um, and say to people, well, you have a license to shoot uh, a wolf, and then say to that same hunter, unless, unless you see that pretty girl that uh, oftentimes lives in Lamar Valley, and so many tourists have gotten to love seeing her around, and she even has a name. How's that hunter going to deal with that? It's, it's called wildlife. These are pets. Uh, and just because somebody recognizes one of these wolves doesn't make them a pet. Wildlife management is supposed to be based in science, not politics. I think the Obama administration rep responded to the politics of the situation. Never before had a Secretary of the Interior taken a step to undermine the Endangered Species Act like this and, and supported the political removal of a species from the Endangered Species Act. Well, the media is definitely guilty of keeping it polarized because um, killing wolves, whether we're hunting them, trapping them, or removing a problem wolf periodically, it really shouldn't be news anymore. Uh, we don't announce every time someone shoots a coyote or someone uh, kills a mountain lion or a bear. Wolves are not weapons of mass destruction. They're just uh, another critter out on the landscape trying to make a living and doing what God put them here for. Why aren't, the, why aren't the middle ground voices heard um, in the media um, is a good question. But I think, that the, uh, I think that there's a lot of drama associated with the conflict. The story we have to tell about trying to live with wolves is far more complicated um, than, than one about, you know, don't kill any wolves or kill all the wolves. I, I, I think it comes down to us not having tidy sound bites. It's incredibly frustrating because um, there really aren't very good data on what the grassroots individual ranchers feel. All we really read about in the newspapers is what the, the mouthpieces say to the media. And I think it's a gross oversimplification of what's really happening out on the landscape. When Dave and I first started ranching here, um, 
very soon after we got sheep, we, we lost a few to coyotes. And at first we did what everybody does. We called up the government trapper and he came in and he shot one and he snared one. And it didn't take us very long to look at each other and say, you know, if we have to exterminate all the native species to do this, then we probably shouldn't be ranching. Um, part of what makes this region special is not just the beautiful views, but the whole biological system that makes this work. And we kind of feel like it's our obligation to figure out how to coexist. Predator Friendly is a certification. Basically, it's a group of ranchers who have committed not to kill native carnivores in order to protect their sheep. And it started in the early to mid 90s. We began with blankets and then later um, started working on mittens and hats and sweaters and smaller knitted products. It's been a way for both producers and consumers to learn about both the risks and the rewards of trying to ranch in an environment where we care about the environment. I really do believe that the, the nature of the wolf controversy has actually amplified some of the other ugliness in our politics. And part of the reason why I've persisted with this whole um, predator-friendly benchmark in this discussion is because I feel like if we could figure out how to crack this nut, we could solve a lot of other problems in our modern society as well. People hate wolves because I think they see them as a threat to their livelihood. I think a big uh, factor in the hatred towards wolves is, is, is uh, lack of understanding and knowledge about wolves, ignorance if you will, uh, or fear. And when we uh, are ignorant or fearful of things, uh, uh, we tend to manifest that into hatred. It can seem like a paradox and a contradiction to want to, at the same time, appreciate the wildness of the wolf, while at the same time feeling the need to control it. But the, the reality, the unfortunate reality, is that now uh, humans are part of the picture. Wolves, to me, are really one small part of a much larger package, and I, I tend to um, be a, somewhat allergic to this ooing and aahing over a single species um, as much as as I think the wolves are indeed magnificent. Um, the whole wolf controversy, both the challenges and the rewards, is really just symbolic of this larger effort to figure out how to have conservation and agriculture work together.